Hey, boys and girls, and mom, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So, I haven't done an off topic in a long time, but there's several things I want to visit with y'all about today. I got to spend the day on the water with a guy that'll, that'll be my Tuesday video you guys will see. This is going to be kind of a Sunday special. It's a guy that's been around the bass world, fishing world, for a lot of years, and he and a couple other guys really altered the fishing industry about three years ago. So, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. We spent some time in East Texas together. We ran into each other at the Bass Cat dealers meeting. I think you guys are going to enjoy that little fishing trip and, and the talk that we had. Really knowledgeable guy and, again, a guy who's kind of changed the industry a little bit. Um, and then I also want to just mention, uh, I, I was really sad to hear Lonnie Stanley died this past week. Uh, I had the pleasure of being around Lonnie a fair amount over the last, gosh, 25 years fishing in East Texas, of course, Stanley Jiggs is right there in Huntington, Texas, which is a, literally a stone's throw from Zavala, the world headquarters. And uh, he was every bit as nice a guy as you would have thought he would have been. And he was one of those guys who, if you were struggling, he'd tell you what's going on. Uh, I fished against him. I remember, I believe it was the 97 Bassmasters Open at Rayburn that he won. We were fishing in the same area, and he was just a super guy to be around. And I know a lot of people around Huntington <clears throat> and all around East Texas are hurting at the loss of Lonnie. He's been sick for a while. Uh, so to, to the Stanley family and to the East Texas fishing family, my heart's with y'all and my prayers are with y'all. Uh, again, he was an innovator. He was a dang good fisherman and just a super nice fellow. So I uh, wanted to mention that. Also wanted to mention this... Uh, Man, this, this seems to be the year of the, uh, of the mullet. Uh, wow, the mullet made a big comeback this year. And actually, the mullet's been around for years and years, right? So if you go back, so if you go back into baseball archives, there have been some spectacular mullets in baseball. And I'm showing you a few on the screen right there. I mean, who can frigate Jose Canseco's mullet? Uh, Juan Gonzalez for the Rangers had a spectacular mullet. Uh, some great mullets in the history of baseball. Uh, hockey, also great mullets. There have been some super mullets in the world of hockey. Uh, still are, as a matter of fact. Uh, this year in Major League Baseball, uh, some great mullets. Uh, Cameron Smith, uh, my own namesake, a Smith boy. Uh, I believe he is, I want to say he's a New Zealander, but forgive me if I get that wrong. He's New Zealand, South Africa, or... Australia, but a PGA Tour professional sporting a fabulous mullet this year, playing really well. Got his first PGA Tour victory this year down in uh, down in New Orleans in the Zurich. Uh, but in the fishing world, a guy, by the way, I would love to meet that I've not had a chance to meet yet. Matt Matt Robertson, I believe is his name. Matt Robertson. I just know him as the Onum guy. He's got those great hats. He had a nice showing at the Classic up here, about 23 miles that direction right there at Ray Roberts, and seems like a really funny guy and, and a pretty dang good fisherman. I think when I looked at his stats, he's averaging a check uh, in every other tournament and a top 10 about every third or fourth tournament. So that's pretty salty in that gang. That, that guy's obviously got game. But this year, uh, man alive, the, uh, the, the Angler of the Year winner, sporting maybe one of the better mullets we've seen in a long time. And, yeah, I know it's kind of long all over. I mean, a proper mullet is business in the front and a party in the back, right? And and Seth kind of has this, but Seth, and I, I'm going to screw your last name up. I believe it's pronounced fighter. Uh, with just a spectacular year, I mean, I think one tournament maybe out of the top 20 or 30 just – wire-to-wire -wire dominance in the angle of the year in Bassmaster this year. So you got two really good mullets. You know, Jim Moyna for years was the mullet man. He was the king of the mullet on the FLW Tour. But he whacked it all off. And it's interesting, I was curious when I looked, he was 27th in the standings last year, whacked his mullet off, and he jumped up to 24. So there might not be the whole Samson thing going on there. But, uh and, and, you know, we did a video a couple of years ago when we hosted one of the college tournaments. There were some pretty – we had a mullet competition. There were some pretty damn good mullets there too. But uh, I, I, I actually sported a mullet, I will freely admit, back in the 80s and 90s when I was cowboy dancing a lot and 
had that cowboy hat pulled down and had that mullet flowing in the back, but the mullets passed me by. So, uh, but congratulations. It sure feels like the year of the mullet. Uh, matter of fact, as I'm posting this, uh, Cameron Smith is right at the top of the leaderboard again at this weekend's PGA Tour event. So hopefully the mullet will get another victory this weekend as well. So, uh, a couple other things I want to mention to you guys. So if you didn't see uh, this week, Six Cents came out with their brand new swim bait. Matter of fact, let me show it to you because I have one of them right here. So there it is. That's the Trace, T-R-A-C-E. It's brand new out. Got some beautiful colors in it. It's a, now they make a floater and a sinker. This is a floater. This one says float on top, but I think that was because it was a prototype. I don't believe they all have it written on there. Not that the fish would care, but it's got a soft tail on it, an articulating tail. And it's got spectacular motion coming through the water. I'm actually real anxious as the water cools off to get up to Texoma, maybe even out at Ivy, uh, assuming that water is as clear as I think it is. Now, I may be wrong about that, but uh, that bait is brand new, just dropped in the last week or so. I know a bunch of colors have already sold out, which, you know, that's kind of the bad thing, but uh, that's a really cool bait. And for those of you who don't know the story, Casey, actually, Casey, the founder of Six Cents, actually got his start in the lure making business by he, and if I remember right, Jonathan Gary won a tournament. I think I've got this story right. And when they won the tournament, one of the prizes was an airbrush kit. And somehow uh, Casey wound up with it and discovered he was talented and started custom painting uh, swim baits and other crankbaits for guys in his dorm room. And that was the, that's the birth, if you will, of six cents, so needless to say, he takes a lot of uh, a lot of pride in how those baits look right out of the package, and and these look spectacular. They're great looking, and and also let me mention to you, so there's a big sale going on at six cents right now. Some items up to sixty percent off, uh, and if you use the code Ken Ten on most of it, you can get another ten percent off. But what I want to mention to you is two of my very favorite things are in this sale. The first one is the bait bag. Now this is the large bait bag. They make a big one and a small one. But what I love about this is the double zipper and it's such a great way, the way the baits just sit right in there. So what I've started doing, I have really tried to cut down how much soft plastic I'm carrying in the boat. You guys know I've always used those laundry bags. Well the problem with those is I would grab a Senko laundry bag and, and I'm not kidding you, I, I just put them on pegboards. A Senko bag had 81 bags of Senkos. That's ridiculous. That's 10 pounds of Senkos. So what I'm doing now is, like for example, this is my flipping and my biffle bug. So the only thing that's in here are flipping baits and biffle bugs. I've got a finesse bag. I've got a dragon bag. Uh, I've got a swim bait bag. So when I know I'm going to go do that, I grab one of those bags. And then I have one additional bag that has one bag of everything in it. And I do that because... If I'm out there goofing off and all of a sudden I realize I hadn't been catching them on a swim bait, but something looks right for it, I know I've got at least one bag of swim baits in there. And it's super handy to just pull that out, take it in the house at night, check my inventory, and know whether I need to add or subtract something to that. Now, don't hold me to this, but I believe this bag has been selling for 14 or 15 bucks, and I think it's like 6 bucks right now. So I'll post a link below to where you can see that. I'm also, so I got to spend some time at the Six Cents factory the other day, and I'm going to show you all that footage probably later this week, but they have improved on this bag, which I love this bag. This is exactly what I use this bag for, for two things, to put new baits in. There's a couple of different sizes, right? But I also use it when I'm a co-angler. This is how I tote extra reels. Just anything that I want to stick in there that I don't want rolling loose goes in there. My sunglasses go in there. And these are the same way since they're rolling out a new one. I think he's got those marked maybe 50 or 60% off. And you'll see, well, I'll tell you. What they did was they've now given it a square bottom. So it, it, it will sit up and it will hold more stuff. But these work great. I love these. Uh, so those are two items. There's a bunch of crankbaits. There's a bunch of soft plastic. There's a bunch of stuff on there for sale. But I wanted you guys to get a look at this stuff because this stuff will sell out pretty quick. And... I appreciate you guys being my viewers, so I wanted to give you a heads up here on Sunday that that stuff is on the sale site. And again, I believe you can use the code KEN10 and get an additional 10% stuff off on all that stuff. So this week, Tuesday video for sure will be my buddy. You guys will know, everybody that watches this video will know this guy. Uh, and we had a really good time uh, fishing in East Texas. 
And then uh, later this week, we'll probably do that Six Sense Factory Tour. I really enjoy doing that. So let's plan on that for the week. We are going back to Rayburn this weekend, I do believe, if the weather holds out. So we'll get some Rayburn footage up for you guys as well. And uh, by the way, I know a bunch of guys keep asking about what happened with the tracking study with Todd Driscoll. I talked to Todd this week. Uh, he's been on vacation for the last couple of weeks, catching a bunch of smallmouth. He said he wants to make sure he's got good data for you guys. So that's probably still three or four weeks in the future. As soon as he says he's ready to meet, I'm going to run over there and meet with him. But that's coming, so don't give up. We're going to find out what those fish that they've been tracking in the housing basin at Toledo Bend did through the pre-spawn, through the spawn, through the post-spawn, and now into the summer. And I'm really looking forward to that. So stick around. More good stuff coming from Ken Smith Fishing. If you don't subscribe, please click that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you get a notification when I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And these occasional one-offs I stick in here as well just for fun. So thanks, guys. We'll see you all soon.